G'day, this is Jack out the back. Today, I've got to get ready for a fuel delivery for the helicopter survey and get the rooms ready for the guys. So I've got to put in some air cons. Let's get to it. Before I get stuck into the air cons, I'm going to just make sure that the load is ready to go for when this fuel gets here. It's reminded me that I've got to send off the serial number for some parts. So I'm just going to take a photo and I'm going to send that off to Danny Smith, DMS Diesel. He's based out of Esperance or Gibson and he services all the way through the gold fields up to us here, which is pretty damn awesome. And he's just a top bloke. I'll send that off to him. He'll line up the parts that I need because he's really good at remote diagnostics, which is quite handy. You know, you're out and about, you have something break, just snap a photo and you can send it straight to him, phone him up and get the job done which I think is one of the biggest advantages of connectivity these days, that we aren't out of reach of specialist advice and help. Looks like needs some engine oil as well. Now I'm not sure if you noticed it. I didn't until I was leaning in there to pour more oil in, but tires are pretty expensive and they're important to look after because no one likes changing a tire. So it was a little bit of a surprise for me when I noticed that friendly little fellow stuck in the tire. That is pretty nasty. That wouldn't be any good on anything like a normal car tire. I was really lucky it was in the heaviest part of the, the tread there. So it's definitely worth when you're doing your little pre-start to have a walk around. So we've got the fuel delivery that's just come in and I'm here with Barry Mason from Mason's Contracting. G'day Barry. G'day Jack. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about why you're here? Yeah, we're based out of Carnarvon, do a bit of work for NRG to uh, deliver the Jet A1. So this is probably the furthest delivery I've done over the last couple of years though for them. Yeah, so what do you normally do week to week? I'm an Outback male. Right, so tell us a little bit about that. You know, how does that work these days? Do you fly around or? No, no, I've got a little 10 ton truck with a 25 foot dog trailer. Um, got a freezer, chiller, dry store, a half tray. So we do uh, frozen goods, chilled goods, dry goods, fuel, anything else the station wants, including their mail. So that's pretty awesome to be able to get some ice cream out in the desert. That's it, yeah, yeah. Any, anywhere they want. Uh, the run's about 1,500 kilometres, the service 21 properties between Carnarvon and Coonline is my furthest point. So everywhere in between. Right, so how many days does that 1500 k's take? Uh, two days. Two days, that's pretty efficient. Big days. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you camp out or yeah. do you stay at one of the stations? Yeah, no, well, there's a mine site up there that I supply as well, Paulson's mine, and I camp, camp there. Oh, that's pretty nice. 
So I'm sure you've got a whole load of stories, but I don't want to steal too much of your time. But what would be one of your big highlights for crazy things that you've either A, delivered or been asked to deliver? Yeah, really? What's that? Oh, chooks, yeah, I've taken live chooks up. Yeah. Right. The, the chooks is a great one because about three weeks ago, our mailman, Richard, who the viewers will meet eventually, he brought ducks down from one of the other stations and we joked that he was being a little bit like one of the Vietnamese posty uh, bike riders. So he had all these ducks on the back and he, he's moving them around. Yeah, no, that's the only livestock is chooks and we only had to put them in the cab. It was too hot to put them on the back, so... Yeah, did you do an E-deck for those ones? <laughs> no, I was, I was creating it when I was supposed to fill out some paperwork, but uh, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> now, I notice here, we're, we've been unloading, and you're pretty well equipped. You've got safety glasses, you've got a hat on, steel cap boots, boots. and what's that in your hand there? My gloves. Right, so can you tell us why it's really important to you to wear your gloves? Because I've hurt my hands before. <laughs> right, that's all we want to hear. <laughs> I find it much better, yeah. And they get burned very easy with the sun these days, so yeah. wearing gloves. Perfect. Thank you very much, Barry. No worries at all. Cheers. Cheers. So this type of bracket for mounting the aircon is really easy to work with because it has a spirit level inbuilt to it. So you can do a quick rough and ready install. So I've picked the height I want to put it at and I can just get it set in position and do the fine adjustment to get it to the level I want. So then from there, it's just picking your width. Now, this one doesn't have to come off so I can start fixing it on this side. So I've got some stability there. And get it set. Forty fives it is. So we just lock them in place. So before we get too carried away, I'm just got to tidy these up. Now, I know I'm not wearing gloves and copper cuts really badly, but it's just gonna be a little bit fiddly. Have a little bit of emery tape just to give it that little bit of a, a touch to take those edges off. Now, I don't use the angle grinder because that gives it a really big burr, as you can see there. You can tidy that up with a knife. You just grab your blade and just give it a little scrape. Now, before flaring, it's good to remember your fittings because they won't go over a flared join. And there's our flared join. A quick thank you to everyone that subscribed and shared with other people. It's really great to have that bit of support. You guys are pretty cool, like this aircon. That's gonna be great for the guys while they're here. It's just another day up here, and it really goes to show that to live and thrive in the outback, you gotta be a bit of a jack of all trades. Cheers, I'll catch you next time. I'd like to say I knew what I was in for, but it's becoming clear that I wasn't. <laughs> And there was a wasp about that big and we got into a battle 
and we danced around the lounge for a while until I trapped him in the sink and then I drowned him in the sink and put the grain on top. And then I did the dishes over the top of that but I was too scared to pull out the thing in case he flew back out again. So given that it's uh, about half past four on a Friday. Yes. Are you feeling a little bit thirsty? Very. Now when you got here, yes. what was the first thing you realised that you'd forgotten when you came to the desert? Beer. How did that make you feel? <laughs> I feel like I wanted to go home. <laughs>